Oh, wait, it's not recording, right? Yeah, it is. We got 25 minutes. Sorry. We didn't even discuss, like, the whole format of this whole thing. I don't know. I don't feel like, I don't feel like we should really have format. I mean, we're, we're just talking about... So it's more like just a discussion. Yeah, just it's a discussion. Okay. So are we good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, you want to intro? Yes. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Forge Gaming Podcast number... I just did this like a couple weeks ago. I think it's 14? Something like that? Is it only 14? Maybe closer to 20? I don't know. I get mixed up with the Judah V. Troys and the podcast. There's a bunch of Judah V. Troys. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so welcome back to another episode. And uh, we got another pretty interesting topic to talk about. I'm here once again with Olamande. And I am the topic. Troy is the topic. Yeah, it's all about me. We're going to talk about the cons and the cons. <laughs> the cons, huh? Yeah. Call me a convict? No. <laughs> you call me a convict because I'm black? Don't go there. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. Um, so, Troy, you kind of brought this topic up, so you want to kind of explain? Yeah. So, um, we just found out, like last week or whatever, that Scalebound was canceled. Um, Scalebound is a game that I was super juiced about. Uh, one of the, I thought it was going to be a good exclusive to the Xbox. Looked very similar to what Final Fantasy is doing right now. Um, not sure the reasons why it got canceled. I heard that with, with some of the gameplay, I heard the gameplay was a little weird. People didn't really understand what was going on as far as gameplay was concerned and multiplayer. But uh, right. that's all besides the point. Point is, I read this article, um, and it talks about how Xbox does not have enough exclusives. Well, is it not enough, or just not this, not as many as players? No, it doesn't have enough. Okay, so not enough. The, the argument is that it okay. doesn't have enough. Go ahead. So, um, after coming out of 2016, where we had games galore, where it was just, it was too many. We've already done a podcast on that. It's just too, there's too many games. Right. It's too many. Um, everything from Gears, um, freaking Overwatch, and... Uh, Destiny basically came out again. Yeah. And like, it was just, it was just, there's so many games, and you just can't keep up with everything. Titanfall 2, Battlefield, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. No, no, no. There's so many games. And so, with them saying that Xbox does not have enough exclusives, I feel like, okay, so first and foremost, PlayStation does have more exclusives than Xbox. Yeah. That is true. That is true. More AAA, AAA, AAA. Yeah. I'm not sure about indie exclusives and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But as far as well, you, know, you also have to throw into the mix the backwards compatibility. Yeah. Because that brings if you're including that, then Xbox has a lot more. Yeah. Because PlayStation that. had to leave a whole lot behind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at PlayStation. PlayStation's got you know, uh, Last of Us is coming back. God of War, um, Uncharted, and. Um, Let's see. Kill Zone is probably going to be coming out with a new game within you know the next year or so, I would think. Yeah. Um, whereas Halo, or we got Halo, which you're watching right now. Halo is an exclusive, even though it's kind of a fairly old exclusive at this point. If we're talking about current games, um, so you know we got Halo, we got Forza, we got Gears of War, and am I missing anything? Oh, I mean, with the upcoming exclusives coming out, you got games like uh, Sea of Thieves. Which a lot of people are excited. I'm excited about Sea of Thieves. I can't wait to see what they're going to be bringing to the table. Can't wait to see. Get it? You get it? Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) What they're going to bring to the table. Uh Um, uh, (laughs) (laughs) Go, go ahead. Ignore Uh, my stupid puns. (laughs) Messed up my train of thought. I had like all these other games lined up in my head. Maybe that was my intention. Yeah, maybe that was your intention. Yeah. But uh, but up up and coming new IPs. um, Um. PlayStation, Sony, we got, we got to stop referring it to PlayStation and, my, and Xbox. It's Sony and Microsoft. Yeah, I mean... Because Microsoft, when you, when you... It's not just Xbox versus PlayStation. It's Microsoft versus Sony. But uh, Are we just saying that because the PlayStation includes the Vita? I'm saying that because the Xbox includes the PC. Yeah, I, well... So it's not, por- it's not por- an por- Xbox exclusive. A portion of it, yeah. It's not Xbox... Gears of War is not an Xbox exclusive. Right, It right, is right. a Microsoft exclusive. Okay, so Microsoft exclusive yeah. versus Sony exclusive. Yeah. I okay. know people are going to get in the comment section and be like, it's a Microsoft exclusive. I see it all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, so basically... And then I'll kind of explain the point that you made earlier yeah. that the article alluded to was that while PlayStation has more exclusives, 
they're kind of one and done games. You know, yeah. they're mainly story based. They are. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're great games. Yeah. But you go through them, you play them, you beat them, and then you know there's not that much longevity, not as much replayability. Whereas Xbox, Forza, Gears of War, and Halo all have incredible replayability. You know, first of all, the two shooters have online multiplayer, which is just endless content. Forza is open world with like you know millions of options. So you have to kind of choose between. I guess it comes down to quality over quantity, right? And in a world where there's so much quantity, you kind of want quality, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, man, it's... it's I, I, I almost can't say quality over quantity because I feel like some of the Microsoft games also do have good quality. It's not just a lot that they put no, out. No, that's what I'm saying, is that there's not as many Xbox consoles. No, okay, okay. But the ones that do come out, you can play. Like you were just saying a few okay. minutes ago, you can play Gears of War until the next Gears of War comes out. Yeah. You know, Gears of War 4. Um, and with yeah. backwards compatibility, that grows even more. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. So what are your thoughts? I mean, what do you think is a better outlet, you know? Um, I, I think that, I think there's a little bit of an imbalance. Okay. I think, um, well, I mean, as far as multiplayer games are concerned, you know, um, with multiplayer exclusives, um, Forza, Gears, Halo, um, and eventually Sea of Thieves mm -hmm. that's coming out. Um, those games are going to have longevity. Those games, have, you know, they're going to be, you're going to be able to play them for a really long time, and you're going to be able to enjoy them. Yeah. But uh, I think that, you know, and the, the one thing that, that pe people get upset about, and Gears, I mean, Gears didn't do this, but uh, people complained about the Halo campaign. Yeah, you no. Know, about, how, I... about, about how, you know, the, the story... The, cha the changing of Halo, a, right. lot of, a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you don't hear anyone complaining about the campaigns for the, for the Sony exclusives. No, because I, I feel like you're, uh, any game that has strictly single player, or at least primarily single player, is going to always beat out the single player of a game that's single player and multiplayer. Because that's where all the focus is. You know, like Last of Us, one of the best stories I've ever seen in a game. Not, not really much multiplayer at all because all the you know all of it was just driven straight towards story he hasn't played but... Gears yet <sighs> no I haven't that's all I'm saying Gears yet. that's all I'm saying but no I mean <laughs> no, go ahead. It, it's kind of like you know like one of the reasons that we feel that Overwatch is so great and the reason why Titanfall was originally great is because it was all put into the multiplayer yeah and it works the same way with single player I think you know like um, I recently played through uh Tomb Raider, the not the newest one, but the the original Tomb Raider on the Xbox One, and you know it was just great. You know it was polished. There was no no glitchiness. There was no you know imbalance with anything. It was just a fun, solid single player. You play it, and you're done. It's like, it's more like a uh, interactive movie almost. Yeah. You know, so it's it's kind of just a different audience that they're trying to appeal to. I think. Yeah, well, well, I think I think Tomb Raider takes a little took a little bit more skill. Because I, I would compare Tomb Raider to The Last of Us as far as, you know, gameplay is kind of concerned. But Tomb Raider did gameplay better than, than The Last of Us did. Yeah, well, Last of Us was a lot more driven on story and, yeah. you know, just the uh, the build of the game. Yeah, um, if, if Last of Us was if Telltale tried to do a game where you were, in, where you were more involved. Right, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. It's like a more playable Telltale. Which, again, the Telltale games... Sometimes I have the best stories out of games. You know, oh yeah, because they're you know books essentially. Yeah, you know, I'm still waiting for that Telltale original story. Yeah, because I mean, for for the most part with Telltale, they're 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 basically riding the coattails of other video game movies, yeah. TV shows, and stuff like media, that. Stuff like that. So yeah, so you know, it's it like I said, it's kind of just you know you can pick what you want. That's one of the great things about this day and age of gaming is that. You know, you don't. You have nothing but options at this point. Yeah. You know, if you want to play story games, you got story games. If you want to play multiplayer games, you got multiplayer games. RPG, open, you know, open world, RTS. You know, I, I, but I mean, I would say the the tough thing is is for the for the undecided buyer, for the person who has not bought this current gen console yet. And that's essentially what this comes down to. You know, I've I've always said that. 
if I were if I hadn't already bought a next gen console and I was trying to decide which one I was going to buy, I think I might go Xbox just because of the backwards compatibility. But with that not being a factor, if you strictly look at the games that you're going to play, because you know ninety five percent of the games you can play on both consoles. Yeah. But if it's a deciding factor, what are people going to choose? Yeah. You know. I mean, are you gonna? And here's the thing for me is that. You know, if, if, if money was no object, um, PlayStation would, to- I think PlayStation would totally be the way to go. If money was no object, I, I can't, I have a hard time justifying spending $65 on a game that I'm only going to play one time. That's true. I have a very hard time justifying that. I, and I've actually heard the argument made of, you know, should single player games cost less? You know, like, think about the amount of hours you put into it. Yeah. You know, if, if it takes you 15, 16, 20 hours to beat a game, you know, that that's great. That's a long, lengthy campaign. Yeah. But you, then you look at something, you know, like, God knows how many hours I put into Destiny now, but I can guarantee you it's far beyond anything that I've played in any of those single-player games. So do you equate time with money? That's the thing, yeah. you know. Are you basing the money that you pay off of the amount of time you get out of it or the quality of it? Both. Yeah, both. I mean, you want you want a combination of both. You right. want to, like, it's like you know nowadays movies are longer. Right. You know, movies are like two and a half hours, also, also three three hours long whenever they come out in DVD form, mm-hmm. with all the deleted scenes that they added to it and everything like that. So, like, yeah. I I can I have a hard time justifying paying twenty dollars. I don't buy movies first and foremost, but I have a hard time, you yeah. know, justifying paying twenty dollars for a movie that's an hour and 30 minutes long and that's you know i've i've encouraged people to you know if it's a single player game like for now on with me for single player games i'm gonna buy it physically i don't want to buy unless i'm getting it heavily discounted i'm not going to buy a one-time game digitally and just you know it just kind of sit there at least i can get some sort of trade-in value whatever heck if it's a game i feel like i can burn through fast enough i'll go red box it you know, because I'm still going to be paying significantly less. But, you know, it's it's kind of hard to find a bad one nowadays. You know, the ones that are AAA single-player games, you know, I, I, fi- I find them to be worth the money most of the time whenever I actually find one that, you know, piques my interest enough. But, you know, that's just me. Yeah. And some of these games do have multiplayer. We're not, we're not sitting here saying yeah. that they don't. Uncharted has multiplayer. Even The Last of Us has multiplayer. Yeah, well, that's why I said primarily single yeah. player. You know, like, um, I don't know, like, you, you could argue that there's a campaign to the first Titanfall game because there's dialogue. Yeah, there's dialogue and it's in that. But, you know, it's, uh, it's just kind of, like I said, you have options. And people will do what they want and, you know... You can, I, we want to hear what you have to say too, you know, because obviously we're speaking from our perspective, and we've it's, uh, Troy owns both consoles, so you can kind of speak from both ends of this. Yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, let's say you didn't own any of the consoles and you were looking strictly at exclusives, where do you feel like you would be drawn? Um, man, I mean, it's it's still it's still a money thing for me. Um, like I said before, if money was no object. I'd probably go with PlayStation. Because I could still play COD and, Des- and Destiny and stuff like that. But uh, also be able to get down those great stories, you know, like Uncharted and God of War. I love God of War. I play God of War since PlayStation 2. You know, like I was, you know, I played on PSP. You know, God of War is great. Um, those are all great stories. But money is an object. I'm not rich. Yeah. You know, I'm not balling out of control. And I'm, I'm looking for the most bang for my buck. Yeah. You know, and... And that's I can get a great campaign with Gears of War, and I get, you know, horde mode, and I get multiplayer, sure. you know, and the the campaign has replayability because I can play it with three of three of my other friends, yeah. you know. And I think horde mode is a really good balance there because those are the kind of things that I find myself kind of coming back to the most. Like yeah. I don't play that much more. You know, you're watching, you know, Halo Firefight right here. I don't play that much multiplayer on Halo ever since Firefight came out for it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not nearly as competitive. You can kind of hang out and play it. You kind of get that single player feel. Yeah. But you can play with other people. It's kind of like co-op. Yeah. You know, and co-op's another one of those great balances. But, 
you know, it's, yeah. I don't know, it, it's a lot of divide between the two. Yeah. Which, it, it kind of does surprise me, though, that it is so far on the left and far on the right with this. Like, you would think there would be a mix. You know, PlayStation would have some of its multiplayer and some of its single player, and same with Xbox. But it's almost like they're trying. Yeah. Like, they intend to have strictly, you know, story versus strictly multiplayer and online. Yeah. And they're looking for faces for the franchise. You know? That's true. And any any console that has had games where there's fan faces with the franchises, um, they last. You know, you look at Nintendo with Mario, um, even though Nintendo's basically screwing us over again. Um, I, I, uh, first of all... That's a topic for another. I know, I know. <laughs> but but uh, they, 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 they have longevity because, you know, Mario's face of franchise, he's gone on from generation to generation, um, from my generation to kids nowadays. My kids yeah. who are six and three and whatnot, they know, they, I've shown them a picture of Mario, they know who the guy is. Right. Well, yeah. it, anybody. Yeah, I show my kids a picture of Kratos, they have no idea who that guy is. Oh, well, I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, no, but, you know, but, you know, that's just kind of, in, in a sense, that's the way that PlayStation's always been, though. Because you have to think of PlayStation's roots. Whenever PlayStation started, there was no online play. Yeah. You know, it was Ratchet and Clank, it was Jack and Daxter, whereas... I mean, there, there was... I mean, oh, okay, the, the original PlayStation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But whereas where the when the Xbox came out, the original Xbox, that was right around the time that Xbox Live launched. Yeah. Halo well, 2. The, the thing is, we all know what the original Xbox is. And the original Xbox is the same Dreamcast. Because the Sega Dreamcast was a combination of mm -hmm. Microsoft and Sega coming together to make a console. Right. And that, that was the first console to have online gaming. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, both of the consoles kind of found what worked. Yeah. You know? And that's, you know, what they've stuck to. And it's one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's probably part of the reason why, you know, EA chose to kind of side with Microsoft, you know, because... Online gaming for EA is big. They're all it's all online gaming. Right. You know everything from Battlefield to Madden, all the sports games, Titanfall. Um, Titanfall's a it's a it's an online only game, isn't it? It's one of the well, Titanfall two is Titanfall two. Titanfall two is yeah, yeah. first one was. And that kind of leads me on to what I was uh, bringing up earlier, but I kind of wanted to bring up here is you know picture you're a you know, let's say you're the head of either Sony or Xbox, sorry, Microsoft, and would you value more good selling exclusives or branding rights or advertising rights for a game that's one of the most popular in the world right now? Yeah. See, I would say the exclusives. I would have to say the exclusives because it's all about who's the face of your franchise. You know, I think that sells more. I mean, you can brand with, with Call of Duty and stuff like that, and that's fine, but those... Those games are also coming out on the other consoles, you know. And like, yeah, yeah, it, it may be a Sony commercial, whenever it's a Call of Duty thing or a Destiny thing, but uh, at the bottom, we'll say hey, Xbox One, Xbox. You know, yeah. All that well, not only that, but you know, because me personally, I I think the advertising rights and the branding rights would probably be better in the long run, because you know, you're you look at the top selling games each year, there's no exclusives on there, you know. It's Call of Duty, it's Destiny, it's Overwatch, mm -hmm. it's the sports games. And, you know, so we talked about earlier, uh, you know, Xbox has got pretty much all the sports games right now. Um, the Division isn't doing too hot right now, but Xbox does have the rights to that game. And then, of course, PlayStation's got the big hitters, Destiny and, or, yeah, Destiny and Call of Duty, um, as well as, I think there's a couple other ones. Yeah. But it's, I think Call of Duty may, may actually be hurting Sony a little bit. Maybe, more, be, more because, games. you know, you look at it and a lot of people will base their console off of that. Yeah. People who are religious Call of Duty players and religious Destiny players, they want all of the content and they want it right away. So if you can take a look at what the best-selling games are and see if you can, like, make that part of your leverage, then I feel like that's going to be better in the long run. I mean, yeah. how many people, you know... People on PlayStation get Call of Duty maps a month early. You know, they get exclusive strikes and stuff on Destiny. Yeah. You know, exclusive weapons. So, you know, I, I feel like if you look at the numbers at the end of the year, you're probably going to come out with more sales for your console. Maybe not quite for your exclusive games, but more sales for your console if you have that branding right on a popular game. Yeah. So, you know, that's just... 
my two cents on it, but, you know, it, first of all, look, it's not like either of these companies are having a hard time financially right now. No, they're not. They're not <laughs> going anywhere. They just both want to be at the top, you know, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the diversity, but I do know that competition yeah. makes it better for us. But I, I will say this, and that is that Nintendo, I don't know, we're mainly talking about Sony and Microsoft, but Nintendo, like, got, like, no COD, you know, no Battlefield, no Madden, no 2K, right. nothing, and it still sold well. Well, that's the thing. They are banking on it. And you know what a big part of their sales numbers is, I think? Kids. Like, I mean, your kids, they own pretty much primarily Nintendo consoles were the first ones they played, right? Yeah. And, you know, you have no problem going out and buying a Wii or a Wii U for your kids because there's not much drawback in it. No. You know, there's hardly any mature games for those consoles. I feel like they're also cheaper. The Switch has already come out, and I don't remember exactly what the price was, but it's like 300, it's 300, bucks. 300 bucks. You know, so there's a price thing, there's the ease of use, there's the friendliness of the console. And see, and the Switch is different, though, because it's no longer child-friendly. You don't think? Oh, uh, yeah, the AAA games are coming to it. Tri- so, and, and not just that, but the console itself is like, I would not give that to my kids. Hmm. That Drop that one time. Yeah, well, I'm thinking, of course, Nintendo as a whole, not necessarily just the Switch. Yeah. But it will be interesting to see if the Switch changes stuff for Nintendo. We'll see. And I think it will, because I think with the Switch, they're trying to get into the big games. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're they're basically abandoning the kids with the Switch. They could be. Because the way that they're making that console is not something that I would let my six-year-old walk around with a freaking, basically a super fragile tablet. Yeah, you know, to just drop on the ground or something like that, like sure, hex now, you know. Yeah, and that'll be interesting because you know, heck, by the time Switch comes out, they might be just as much of a topic as this. Yeah. I mean, how crazy would it be if one of the top ten AAA games in the country decided to go with Nintendo as their branded game, and the Switch was the one that got all the exclusive stuff right away? How, what would that do for Nintendo? I don't know. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening either. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. The branding rights just make such a big difference for these consoles. Yeah. And Nintendo's just been left out. You know? But they're banking on their con- on their exclusives, and I would not say it's paying off. <laughs> and they're, they are abandoning the Wii U. No, oh, early. Yeah. Early, too. They're abandoning it, and like, you, you can't even care. Nothing even carries over. All the games that you bought on the Wii U through the store do not transfer over. You know? Yeah, yeah, that that sucks. And that's the thing is like Nintendo's usually had the backwards compatibility. You know, playing yeah. the playing the um, what was that? You could play the GameCube games on some of the GameCube and Nintendo sixty four games on the Wii and stuff like that. But you know, it's just uh, see how it goes. Nintendo's definitely going to be a they're going to be the wild card. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, we'll see what they have to bring to the table. Yeah. But, I mean, they've already sold out. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, they've already sold out pre-orders. I saw. So, yeah, we'll see. We will see. And their, and their console's coming out at a great time. Mm-hmm. Do they do it like this every time? Yeah. Just, like, like throw, early, it, yeah. throw it in Early the in the year? Yeah. Before, because consoles usually come out like November fall. November time. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Fall, winter. Yeah, yeah. You know, they come, they come out. Nintendo is anything but conventional. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's smart of them to, especially with that, that buttload of games that came out in the fall of 2016. Also, if they came out right around the PS4 and Xbox One, I don't think anybody would be buying Nintendo. Yeah, especially since it's not 4K. Yeah. And it's, it's 1080p on the on the TV, but right. whenever you carry it around, it's 720. Mm-hmm. It drops yep. down. Right. Yep. Well, we will see, so stay tuned. But guys, as always, you know, let us know what your thoughts are, you know. Would you prefer to have branding rights or exclusive? Would you prefer to, you know, uh, you know, would you prefer to have the single player games or the online multiplayer games? You know, and you know, just tell us what you'd like and why. And uh, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. That's all I got. That's all you got. That's all I got. All right, yeah, guys, drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for a whole lot more, and we will see you guys online. Go Sega. Go Sega. Sega. Go Sega.